Hello everyone and welcome to the 2022 Memorial Championship presented by Discraft. We're here at Fountain Hills Disc Golf Course for the opening round of the tournament and I'm joined by none other than Nate Perkins and Nate, we've got some sweet action with a great feature card to get this thing kicked off. Couldn't be more excited about this card, Terry. We've got Kayla Visca throwing the brand new Falcor here on hole one. 393 feet to the pin and you can't come up short. <laughs> you can't come up short. It's pretty much a... It's either a re -tee or we're going straight to a drop zone if you if you go into the water actually here. And of course the epic hole one. You, you can't watch this hole get played without mentioning Nate Doss with the ace as the first ever disc golfer to get onto ESPN's Sports Center Top 10. Here's Paul McBath. He's won this a few times. And that's actually his first throw of the 2022 season, and he's going onyx here. Oh. Hits the ledge, stays in, Terry. Look like a solid shot from McBath. We didn't see him at the All-Star weekend, and we didn't see him in Las Vegas, but he's ready to go here in Arizona. Here's Drew Gibson. And Drew is actually going Falcor as well. Of course, Drew, part of that mixed bag sponsorship or open bag. A little tester to get your season going, huh? Yeah, pretty sketchy first putt. Kale, similar position. Yeah, he's been going back and forth between his normal pitch putt and that spin putt that we saw just right there coming from the left hip. Wow, and Drew Gibson looked like he's picking up right where he left off just a few days ago in Las Vegas. And I'm not just talking about the shirt, which I love. <laughs> He's feeling it this year, Terry. Good way to start off the season officially for Macbeth. And last year it was Macbeth and this guy right here, Paul Uliberry, that were going at it as the tournament wrapped up. Paul Uliberry was trying to hunt him down from the chase card. Came up just a little bit short, but he certainly put on a good run. So we head over to hole number two. These guys are ready to go. Macbeth with the honors. Yeah, we had a little bit of a tailwind left to right on hole two. Typically, we'll see players go for that low right gap, but the ceiling keeps getting lower and lower every year. Drew... No stranger to a low ceiling grip. He's going Falcor again, Terry. That's a brand new disc for him. Yeah, and it was actually here in Arizona a, a, just a month ago or so. Kale was out playing the Shelly Sharp, and he gave me a little rundown what the Falcor was all about. As he's working on this new line of discs that are all being produced, of course, by Prodigy. Good safe shot. He didn't you, seem to like it. Little inside. Oh, the spotter gets out of the way and thankfully still gives the green flag. You know, really using that palm tree out there as your, you know, aiming point. If you come in just inside of it or just outside of it and a little bit of a skip flare, you're probably going to be inside the circle. Do you like the angle a little more closer to the water like we see from Paul here? Or do you like being wide and out to the right i think it's just a shorter shot overall but you, it definitely makes you straighten out the the shape a little bit and drew is really far down the fairway and just around the palm 
Hey. Circles back. That's beautiful. That's a scepter that he's throwing into the green there. So it looks like Macbeth not only got the distance, but then also has this left side angle. And he's going onyx here on this approach. Leaves it a little wide. Yeah, I was just going to say, certainly just trying not to make the mistake of finding something that gets a little skippy, finds the water at the end of the flight. That's really the one mistake. Walking away with a par isn't going to kill you here, but you certainly don't want to put anything in the drink either. So this is outside the circle. On the pole the whole way. Looking pretty good. Now, him and Yuli definitely talked about the red shirt combo, right? <laughs> I mean, that's a thing. They probably ro ro rolled their eyes when they saw each other on, on the <laughs> teep out of one. It's supposed to be for Sunday, right? Uh, yeah, exactly. I won't forget that playoff between Drew and Gannon for some time. Yeah, just incredible. As you said, that took place just a few days ago, and a lot of the tour players headed down south from Vegas down to here. It's about four and a half, maybe five hours, depending on uh, how big your van is or the RV that you're driving. Speaking of drives, here's Macbeth on three, 294 feet. Throwing darts. Paul went with the captain's raptor, and Drew is going with the scepter once again. It kind of seems to be a common theme. In a wide open field, a player will go with a more overstable disc on that steep hyzer line. Yeah, I feel like if you, you know, have a mid, it just requires that much touch. Now, maybe it's still easy for our top level players, but when you're throwing something that's just you know, an arc, so to speak, throwing a big old spike. It's just going up and gravity's doing the work. Kale, a little bit lower line. Yeah, it's an FX2 from Kale. Honestly, that's one of the difficult parts of Fountain is the, the distractions. You can see Paul was a little distracted there. You have all these people in the gallery standing still, and then you have people that don't even know what's going on walking by on the path. And that's just a part of this course, wouldn't you say, Terry? Yeah, and, you know, during the FPO coverage, we kind of talked about the same thing in the sense that this is a public park. You have a lot of people that are little bit older and they just simply go out for their casual leisure walks you know day in and day out and a few more distractions here than at some of the other places we might find but also we get a lot of people that just stop by and discover disc golf for the first time and that's pretty special to witness when when you see someone see the disc fly for the first time when they throw it across that pond and their eyes just light up like, did you see how far he just threw it? Yeah, they're always sharing with one another. And I also think back to there's now times after coming here for so many years, there's people that are walking around the sidewalk around this lake or this pond that I actually recognize or know or have talked to year after year. You actually somehow develop relationships, even though you only come out here a couple times a year. I'm Garrett Gerthy. People know me as Double G. I've been making Double G Craft Jerky since I was 16 years old. Whether I'm at home or on the road, Double G Craft Jerky is the snack that I go for. I've actually found myself eating Double G Craft Jerky on my long drives to the next tournament. We all know Double G's got a big arm, but he's also got a big heart. Every bag of Double G Jerky that you buy supports children's disc golf and goes to a great cause. You can find Double G Craft Jerky at DoubleGJerky.com.
Looks like Macbeth is ready to go. I was just thinking about some jerky. I know I'm always giving it away here on the channel. Big shout out to those guys. And Paul's going Captain's Raptor again and <laughs> nearly skips it up and in. I'm just going to jump ship up into there. So this one is playing like an island. Those assets mark the island. It's about as big as the circle. And Drew going Scepter once again. And this is actually a new disc as well, Terry. This is an A5. Kind of that beadless zone type disc. It's so interesting. You, you mentioned on the previous hole, we're seeing as Paul comes in, also puts it right next to the pin. You see... Again, three of the players, kind of big, high, arcing spikes. And then you see Kale with a much lower line go at it. And same result either way. It's just interesting to notice the, you know, the differences in how they go about attacking the course. I've known Kale for probably close to 20 years now, and I've never really thought of him as a guy that takes these big, sweeping hyzer shots. Yeah. He's just... Yep. That's not really his game. He's got power. It's just not really the lines he likes to play. But that's a star frame and a collective maybe 22 feet away for all of them. As we head over to hole five, 441 downhill. And this one gives players trouble every single year. Paul swinging at Zeus wide, and that is to perfection. Bullseye. Yeah, if, you've, if you have the power, you can swing it wide over those trees. If you don't, it kind of gets interesting to, to shape an ante that isn't on too much angle and isn't too low because those trees are out of bounds. A lot of these guys are just able to take those trees completely out of play and just put it way up in the air on a hyzer angle. Yeah, getting past that last tree where we saw Drew, that's the key to this hole because if you come up short and right of it, you're almost always going to have a low ceiling. And you can Kale see doesn't like that. Kale doesn't quite have the power, so that, that's exactly what I was just mentioning on the difficulty. When you have to actually shape it on Annie, you can see he got over on it too much, and that Falcor just rode long. And Yuli realizing he didn't put quite enough on it. And here again, anytime you're short, you're going to have these branches to contend with and you got to be careful because if you get too aggressive that can easily carry into the OB so Kale looking like he's going to pick up a bogey the, potentially uh -huh. so he had called a provisional here and he had played it because he wasn't quite sure. Okay, now it's officially going to be a bogey either way, but he wasn't sure if the sidewalk was the out-of-bounds there or if it was the road that was the out-of-bounds. So that's why he played it from both spots. He's got that just brief pause. He pulls that putter down, and it just pauses right in front of that right leg for a moment, and he's kind of just stuck with it. Yeah, and everyone's talked about how much his putting has improved. You know, that seemed to be a little bit of his challenge, I mm -hmm. feel like, over the last few years. And, well, we saw what he did at the Pro Tour Championships, and we've seen what he's done at Las Vegas. Clearly that putter seems to be dialed in. Kale will tap in, and this is just a, a good moment for everyone out there. If you're ever unsure of the rules or how something is played, you can call a provisional. you got to make sure you tell the entire group that you declare it, and you play it out both ways, and that's exactly what he's done here. Now, in this case, either, either spot he took is going to result in a four, but it's something you need to always be uh, aware of. As Macbeth looking to go up and over here on number six. And he's going Captain's Raptor again. I mean, as, as soon as he gets comfortable with a, a trajectory and a stability, he's just going to continue on with it. 
Same copy line paste, here. It seems like, right? Yeah, copy and paste. And there's Drew with the scepter once again. And these guys are just matching essentially shot for shot. It, very quickly we see they're both sitting at five under par through the first five holes. And it feels like they're throwing nearly identical shots. And that's a captain's raptor from Paul as well. Looks a little tight. That'll work. Still about circle's edge though. A little bit scarier putt. Yeah, definitely scary. A lot of air <laughs> airspace behind those chains. Need full commitment here. Easy to be tentative there, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, Terry, we're going to have to start paying attention now. Uh, Drew is six for six. Paul's putting for six in a row. It's a pretty good start. It is. And I, I feel like the front half of this course is the much more dangerous half. That's where most of the water is. Once you get to the back, water only comes into play really on one or two holes. Yeah. You know, unless you throw an absolutely terrible shot. So if you can get through the front half relatively clean or on fire, man, there's just a lot of birdies to pick up on the back. Kale left out of the party there as we're going to head over to hole number seven. This is the shortest hole on the entire course. It's on a peninsula, but just 210 feet. Paul going Luna here. Well, he doesn't like it. Yeah, because he knows exactly what putt he left himself with. <laughs> Circle Zed's staring straight at the water. Not the uh, nine-foot tap-in he had on the previous hole, that's for sure. We'll see if Drew can answer something a little bit closer. That's a jokery from Pro Discus. And that wasn't the angle he intended. No, that was stable and pushing left right out of his hands and this is such a unique play. We've seen this become more and more popular over the last few years to go with that forehand up and over, carrying it over the water, and he's right at circle's edge. We're definitely not seeing the forehand out and over the water by Kale. No, I don't think so. This is a PA3 here. Oh, just smooth. He needed that one. So Drew can... Yeah, that was a misfire, Terry. I mean, he didn't even cross cross the green. Yeah, it looked like it was just stable right out of his hands, like I said, and found the water. So Macbeth staring straight at the water, maybe just inside the circle. And short, so just as we're talking them up both drew and Macbeth prove they're human yeah yeah he just seemed a little quick when he brought that putter down it's just a beautiful day out here it's Thursday afternoon early March it's time for the memorial temperatures in the high 70s I, yeah, it's definitely one of the reasons why I come play this event. I mean, I think a lot of people feel the same. It's just a great place to to be yeah, this time so of much, year. So much tradition, you know, of course, you know, this event, a premier event for so many years. We've seen it kicking off various tours, including the national tour, the pro tour. Just a staple for most people's annual travels. And that's a huge drive here on 8. That was a big shot with his nuke. Kill going to Falker. He just needs to beat that tree. I'm not sure if the two meter rule is in effect. I think it I think it tends to be at this event. You're exactly right. I heard the starter Sarah mention it earlier that it is in fact okay. in effect, and that's right there was Macbeth land uh, landing zone was about as good as you could ask for Unless you try, maybe you can push a little more distance <laughs> he just hits that so hard Terry 
Uh, oh not my quite goodness. as far as Macbeth, but that's great position. That's a, again. There's just oh, no. no one throwing the disc like Drew right now. I mean, his his tempo on the tee pad for the shots that he shapes, it's it's so impressive to watch. And then he's backing it up with the putter, which is, you know, again, that was otherwise his his trouble spot, but not anymore, it seems like. <sighs> That's tragic. There's only a handful of trees you can even get stuck in out here. And, and at this point with where he is, I was just going to say this is layup zone, but it's not, apparently. Oh, and he gets the green, so he could still save the par. And that's a difficult angle. We'll see if he can get it to nestle, and it does. Nice shot. Barely. <laughs> Tossing the Luna there. Yeah. Definitely nice touch. And I, I got to say, it looks like Kale is just having a very rough go at it. That's not something I'm used to seeing. Yeah, Kale, Kale knows right away why he missed a putt. And a lot of the times he says when he misses low like that, it's because he gets his weight forward too soon in his putting stroke. And when, when he's really putting at his best, he has that weight backward and, and he get, really gets his weight behind the disc rather than the weight kind of leading the putting stroke. Maybe what's most important about that is, uh, Yuli doesn't convert, is that he knows, he recognizes what he's doing. It's just a matter of can he make that adjustment you know, consciously step up to the next opportunity and say, hey, you know, I've got to make the correction as Paul gets back on the birdie train. He goes now seven for eight. Let's see him reflect for a moment. He knows he's going to take in the sunshine and he's got to get things going here on the back. We move to the final hole of the front nine. Paul McBath sits at seven under through the first eight. Drew right on his tail. This is honestly one of the tougher par threes you can have in the game. Such a small landing zone. You can't really see the landing zone at all. You've got this low ceiling right off the tee pad. Yeah, and if we go back nearly a decade, it's Listen to Drew scrape across the pad. Oh, and he finds the landing zone. Paul McBeth once shot a 17-under at the, this course, and this was the hole he missed. This was this the was hole. The only one, and he even to this day will tell you, like you just said, it's one of the toughest par threes in disc golf. So much danger, even though these guys are making it look easy. Oh, off the gunite. And sometimes that's a blessing in disguise. When you're out here, you know this is a layup. And Kale's done it perfectly. And Drew showing some good discipline, even with a hot putter. Yeah, I mean, you only have maybe 15 feet behind that bucket, and it's pretty sloped. Annie pitch. <laughs> yeah, that was an interesting initial angle. Here's McBath trying to pick up the birdie on his nemesis hole. Wow, in the heart. Paul McBeth from 45 feet. Incredible. Well, we've had a great opening here. Nate, I got to thank you for joining me. Hopefully uh, we're going to see how this train keeps rolling in the back half hey this is a huge honor terry thank you for having me this is quite the card to be commentating on right now 
Looking forward to it. If you don't want to see where the scores are at overall, close it down now. But if you do, we're going to take a look through the front nine. We're seeing a great start here by Paul McBeth. A lot of other challengers and contenders there. The fives, the six, the sevens. Those guys are getting at it. We'll see you guys for the back nine of the first round here at the 2022 Memorial Championship.